More leaked benchmarks of AMD's big Navi graphics card have appeared online showing some surprising performance results. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Polar Backup. Polar Backup is an affordable cloud storage based backup solution that will help you protect your most critical data which could save you a lot of headaches if your drives fail or get stolen. Polar Backup is also incredibly secure using zero knowledge backups and 256 AES military grade encryption to protect you from theft or ransomware. Some of the features include set and forget automatic backups, files can be stored forever, the ability to backup local, external, and network drives, desktop agents and web consoles, the ability to use your own AES-256 encryption password for maximum security, and file versioning. Polar Backup is a great tool for old photos, videos, files, and anything you want to keep as secure and safe as possible. And right now you can get 10 terabytes for the price of 5. When you buy a 5 terabyte lifetime plan, Polar Backup will give you another 5 terabyte plan free. If you're looking for a powerful and affordable solution for backing up all of your most precious data, be sure to click the link in the description below and give it a try. So just recently Twitter leaker Tom Appisack found what appears to be some leaked benchmarks for both the RX 6800 and 6800 XT over on Geekbench. And while these leaked benchmarks do look impressive, they may be somewhat lower than many of you were expecting when compared to a previous TimeSpy leak I shared which showed up to a nearly 20% gain versus my own non reference RTX 3070. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these results versus an RTX 3070 and 3080 in a nice little chart that Video Cards has put together for us, and then I'll give you my thoughts on them. And by the way, all my sources will be in the description below, so you can go ahead and click those links and get everything that they have to say on the matter. But in any case, as you can see here, there are five different performance results from the 6800 to the 6800 XT. And if we take a look at Video Cards chart here, the slowest 6800 result is actually a little bit slower than the 3070, at least according to these leaks. And you know, that was a little bit surprising to me, but if we take a look at the fastest 6800 XT result, we can see that it's quite a bit faster than the 3070 coming in at 127% of the performance, which would land it just a little bit slower than the RTX 3080, which is a little bit more in line of what I was expecting to see out of the 6800 XT at least. So, you know, if we take a look at all the various performance results here, we can see that there's a pretty big discrepancy between the lowest result and the highest result, especially when you look at the 6800 XT. And I think that's down to the fact that the highest result here is probably from a custom 6800 XT, which is a little bit unfair to be comparing it to what I assume is probably a reference RTX 3070. So, you know, we're probably looking more at a RX 6800 XT coming in between, you know, 9% to 14% faster than the 3070, which don't get me wrong, that's still impressive. But again, I know many of you might be a little bit disappointed by that. But the reason why we're seeing results here that are maybe a little bit unfavorable for AMD is the fact that, you know, these these big Navi graphics cards have quite a bit less shaders compared to the NVIDIA counterparts. So if you take a look at the RTX 3070, it actually has more FP32 cores than the RTX 2080 Ti that it's replacing. And, you know, it doesn't exactly scale perfectly because yes, it has 5,888 CUDA cores, which is quite a bit. But when you compare that to the 2080 Ti, it's able to match it with the 4,608. And in a lot of cases, it can actually even beat it. And that's because, you know, when we move to the Ampere architecture, although they doubled the FP32 core, they didn't exactly double everything else. And on top of that, they moved from a situation where you had, I believe, um, you had the FP32 cores in one section and then the int cores in the other section, whereas now you have the FP32 cores and then FP32 slash integer. So what that means is that with the Ampere architecture, if you have any integer operations coming across the GPU, well, you're probably going to be, you know, limited to in each SM only half the FP32 performance, which could be a pretty big performance deficit if you're not able to use all of the actual CUDA cores in the GPU at all times. So that's why that, you know, if you look at compute tasks like Geekbench, you're probably going to see some pretty favorable results for these new NVIDIA Ampere cards. But when you take a look at AMD's big Navi cards, unlike NVIDIA's new Ampere architecture, which seems to be compute focused, it looks like the big Navi RDNA 2 architecture is going to be a little bit more gaming focused, especially when you take a look at that new Infinity cache that they're implementing. It just, the whole entire GPU itself looks like it's going to scream in games, but when you take a look at things like Geekbench, 
and even potentially, you know, 3D Mark, it might fall a little bit behind your expectations. So, you know, although these benchmarks do look maybe a little bit disappointing for you, you got to remember, again, NVIDIA's architecture is a little bit more compute focused, and it's going to have a huge advantage in something like this, where, you know, if you take it and you run, say, the newest game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you might find that the RX 6800 is actually going to be a little bit more competitive with an RTX 3080, and that's kind of where I expect it to land. And I got to say, I'm really, really excited to get my hands on one of these big Navi graphics cards. I'm going to be trying my absolute best. So if you're not subscribed already, I highly suggest you do subscribe as I will be doing all kinds of various content on these big Navi graphics cards. And I got to be honest, I'm a lot more excited for big Navi than I am for, say, like an RTX 3080 Ti or any other RTX 30 series cards that are coming out. Because although the stock is improving for these 30 series cards, I got to be honest with you, with the lack of availability and the low VRAM count on these RTX 30 cards, as exciting as they are, I find myself getting a little bit more hyped up for these big Navi graphics cards because you're going to have 16 gigabytes of VRAM all the way from the RX 6800 to the 6900 XT, which, yeah, all games might not exactly need 16 gigabytes right now, but I think that getting 16 gigabytes into your video card just allows you to be a little bit more future-proof, and they do have the ability to run ray tracing. In, in some leaked ray tracing benchmarks that we saw a while ago, it looks like these big Navi graphics cards are going to be able to somewhat hold their own versus the NVIDIA cards, and they're performing a little bit better in ray tracing than I originally expected. So, yeah, if you do play ray tracing games a lot, maybe you'll be better off with an NVIDIA card, but I think the 16 gigabytes of VRAM and the pretty decent ray tracing performance out of these big Navi graphics cards is making them look really, really appealing. And on top of that, I think they're just going to have a little bit better price to performance overall. Now, the unknown factor here is, you know, what are they going to do about DLSS? Because I do assume that in the future at some point, if we can get some sort of DLSS technology like DirectML, you know, implemented at a global scale and just basically every image that goes into the GPU can be automatically upscaled by AI, well, that could save you a lot of performance. So I think AMD needs to get on that. And on top of that, we all know that the Navi architecture that preceded Big Navi had some serious driver problems on release, and it took them quite a while to get them fixed up. So I'll be really, you know, keen on seeing what they do with those Big Navi drivers. I'm going to definitely report to you on day one what my driver experience is is like when I do get a big Navi graphics card is that's going to be a very important buying factor for everyone out there who's going to get these cards. But for me, this is going to be the first time that I might actually run in all AMD PC. You know, in the past, I've often run Intel and NVIDIA, but, you know, AMD's just been absolutely killing it lately. And not only is their CPU division looking really good, but on top of that, these GPUs are looking really, really exciting. And this might be not only the first time I have an all AMD PC, but the first time I run an AMD graphics card in my main system, which, you know what, I'm really excited excited to see what they can offer and I just cannot wait till the 18th so we can finally get our hands on them but hey that's just what I think how fast do you think the RX 6800 and 6800 XT are going to be let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so Nvidia and Intel drop prices also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed